Hi all, in this video we're going to download Ruby onto this Windows system and then have a quick play with it to make sure it's ready for us to practice some Ruby basics. So if you go ahead and open a browser and then search for Ruby download we'll find there's the official Ruby language website but also this Ruby installer site and if you go to there we'll get a list of the current installers and other uh, versions that you can download depending on how you prefer to work but for me I'm just going to grab the latest installer shown at the top of the list here so we'll let that download and once it's complete you can open your downloads folder and then double click to run it we'll just go through the process here we want to add Ruby to the path, otherwise it'll make it uh, more difficult later on. We can change the location if we want, and we'll associate .rb and .rbw files with the uh, installation. I'm not going to install either of these because uh, we're just going to stick with basic command line Ruby at the moment, so we don't need any of the Tickle or TK support for now. Hit install and we'll do everything needed for you. Okay, fairly straightforward. Now that that's installed, you can get rid of the installer itself and close this down. And if you go to the start menu and type CMD to open a command window, we can now check that Ruby is installed by typing ruby-v and here is the version that we installed so we know we have that now. If you want to start interactive Ruby you just type IRB. Currently in this build you get this message DL is deprecated please use fiddle. Uh, it seems that this is uh, an error with the community that's gone and built it so if you go if you want to you can go to the C drive find Ruby go to library and Ruby and version 2 and find dl.rb here it is and you can comment that out so just add a comment tag there save it down get rid of it and if we try running Ruby again, uh, sorry, interactive Ruby, let me just change this. We just start interactive Ruby with no comment now. Now, interactive Ruby is something that will uh, keep cropping up as you, uh, you know, Google and look around uh, about Ruby, learning Ruby, but it's not really of much use to be honest, because what we'll do is create individual .rb files and execute them from our system. Uh, an example of what this can do, if you put this in, puts hello world, it'll echo it back to you here. And if there's any, th any value returned, it will show it here as well. That's pretty much what this is for. Uh, you can put many lines in and then execute it but really you're best doing that in a .rb file and executing that .rb file. To If you do play with this to exit or to get out of this you just exit and we can just close this down now. For storing our Ruby files then I suggest you pick a folder somewhere on your system somewhere close to the C drive because you'll need to possibly navigate to them and set up a new folder I'll just set one up called Ruby and that's where I'll store all of my Ruby files as we will be using the command prompt uh, from Windows what you might want to do is just do a little bit of setup on here so I recommend if you right click on the menu bar and go to properties just change a few things uh, one of them is to set the screen background to let's see I can't find it on the color picker 
if you set it to 128 I believe it is and also change the layout this uh, the width of the screen is somewhat restricted so move it to say 120 and 90 and 40 I found to work fairly well so should we okay if we just okay those we get a bit of a, a better sized window so that gets us set up we've got a folder in which to put our Ruby files when we start making them and we've got the command prompt set up properly because what we will be doing is calling the Ruby files from a command prompt or we can execute them uh, in here because Ruby files are associated now if we create a new file and just call it test.rb we'll see it's now recognized as being a Ruby file obviously it doesn't do anything uh, this one so that's fine we've got Ruby installed we're all set uh, in terms of uh, being able to uh, use interactive Ruby if that's what we want to do or we can start using test files and uh, sorry Ruby files and what I'll do I'll edit these Ruby files in SkyT as before so uh, as mentioned in the VB script of course so there's nothing else that we need to install here so just as a final check, what we'll do is put a line of Ruby into test.rb, the one we used before, which is puts hello world. And if we try and run that by double clicking on the file, you'll see the command prompt opens very briefly, but then shuts straight away. So we know it's working, but obviously it doesn't do anything. What we need to do is navigate to this folder and this file and execute it in the command prompt so let's go back there and change directory to dev slash ruby I believe it was yep. and if we check what's in this directory because there's only test rb okay we knew that but now we can run it by simply calling the file because Ruby is on the path, remember, so it will understand what we mean. And there it is echoed back, hello world, which is all that our file does. It just outputs whatever this string is. So that's fine. We know that Ruby's installed, Ruby's on the path. We can call these files and we can work from our uh, folder here, building up our set of files. And that's it. We're ready to do some Ruby.